today we're going to a workshop that has five Formula One cars in it and we're going to take a look at those cars and some of the ingenious engineering that's involved. So as I've mentioned a couple of times on this channel, my introduction to motorsport and my involvement in motorsport is through my father who actually runs a race team and nowadays he works on ex Formula One cars and prepares them for private clients. So in his workshop at the moment are five different Formula One cars, uh, some Benettons, some Lotuses, an F2 car as well. And it's an absolutely perfect place for us to show you some incredible parts of F1 cars and the engineering involved. So there are so many interesting parts to these F1 cars. I wanted to come down here once a month or so and see my dad see what he's working on and get him just to explain a few of the really interesting parts about these F1 cars. Now, in front of us here, we have a Benetton uh, just over 20 years old. One really interesting thing about this suspension is the difference between having a normal coil spring like this, but the more modern cars actually use something called a torsion bar, which essentially does the same job, but it has other benefits. So we're just gonna run you through that. So dad, could you just go through like what's happening here at the rear of the car? Push rod forces come through here and the car is supported on this spring. So, so as the car goes over the bumps, then, then the spring is, is, is being compressed and, 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 and rebound. Uh, we then move on to the torsion bar because this is a big bulky unit. On the front of this car we have torsion bar suspension. Uh, this is a torsion bar from this car. So whereas we were compressing the spring, we now twist in the torsion bar. I think it's important to see how the, the forces are, are moving. So you've obviously got the wheel here. When it's sat down, the forces are coming up here through the push rod and in here is where kind of all the magic happens. This is where the suspension is. You can't see it in here, it's all hidden. But imagine the force coming up here and then we have this torsion bar that's in here. So the force going through a rocker, uh, something that moves like this, is put into the torsion bar here. And so rather than it compressing the spring, we're actually twisting this torsion bar. What's the reason for having that torsion bar compared to a spring? Like, you know, that spring's like a normal road car, right? That's, you know, I know it's packaged in a slightly different way, but the spring is doing the same job. Yes, that's right. So now this is, this is, this is a fifth of the weight of that rear spring. Right. And obviously a lot easier to package. Uh, this is from this 2000 Benetton. This is where we are 10 years later. So everything's getting smaller and lighter and easier to package. This video was brought to you by our sponsors, The Ridge Wallet. Now these guys make some fantastic wallets in over 30 different styles, including carbon fiber, like the F1 wishbones we have here, and burnt titanium, like the clevises that go into the wishbones. The cool thing about these wallets are that they're really slim and fit into your pocket without really noticing that it's there. They hold up to 12 cards and have a money clip on the back. So you've got everything that you need all in one place. And one of the interesting points that I like to look at are these absolute pieces uh, of art here, the exhaust system. Um, as you can see here, they're, they're all different lengths uh, with kind of a really organic flow to them. And I always find it interesting, like why are the exhausts like this? It must be something to do with the power. So dad, I mean like, why, why is this one at the front like coming straight back and what, why are the other ones more curved and, and so on? So all, all, of the, all of the headers, the primary tubes, need to be of an equal length uh, so that within the firing order, the waste gases, when they're, when they're forced down the, the, the tubes on the exhaust stroke, mm. are all in compartments. If they're all the same length, they collide and then we get disturbance and back pressure. So in the engine, as the, as the pistons are coming up and the explosion's happening, the, gas, the exhaust gases are coming out. It's then pumped out by the exhaust stroke of the piston coming up the exhaust valve we know, and they, they all go down the, down the exhaust system in order. Right, and so if they, were, if they were the same length, they wouldn't come out, they'd all bang together. That's right, yeah. And that, yeah. does that lose power or? Well, it, it creates a back pressure, you lose the ease of flow. So this is a, a V10, a Judd V10 engine. So on this bank, we've got the, the five um, exhausts coming out of the engine. Uh, so they all, they all come together so that the, the flow, the exhaust gases come together and then they come into this collector. What, why is it placed here? Is there, is there a reason that it's so far back or so far forwards? Primary pipes are a given length 
The primary pipes are the, the first pipes coming yeah, out of the end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, before the collector. So that's a given length, and that length is decided on the dyno. Right. Because you change the length, it changes where the power is, where the torque is, or whether you have it higher up the rev range. But you can vary the power, and you optimise that length on the dyno. So that's really interesting. So you can, you can tune the engine, not just within the engine, but also with the exhaust system. With the inlet air in and exhaust out. And so the exhaust gases come through here, then they come into the collector and you want to kind of stack everything up, all of the gases, all of the explosions basically, stack them up so that they're all kind of in line one after another and not bashing yeah, into this each is, other. This is, the collector is the first point of restriction right. on the exhaust because it's you've got one cylinder coming down one pipe, all of a sudden you've got five pipes going into one what? cylinder yeah. and this is the first point of restriction. So those, they need to be in order so that they flow cleanly and don't, in that point, they're not colliding with each other and creating a pressure yeah. that then restricts the flow from the combustion chamber. Makes sense. I look at the exhaust system and, and, and think that it's actually a really simple thing. You're just trying to get the gas out of the engine and, you know, out, out of the way. But actually, obviously, it makes a big difference to the brake horsepower of the engine and, and the torque and the drivability as well of the engine. So that's really interesting. For, for us... It's quite simple. Whatever the engine is supplied to us with, for whatever specification that is, depending on what we're putting it in, then or whoever the engine supplier is, will give us a primary pipe length. Okay, so they give you the length, and then you have to fit it within yeah. within the confines of the, the bodywork. So that's the other thing, is everything's so tightly packed on these cars that the engine manufacturer will give you the length of this part of the pipe, right? The, the, yeah, they give us a straight pipe. length. Yeah. That's, why they, that's why they're so curly cut, cut, yeah. to get them into, to package them in such a So from space. here to here needs to be a, a, a certain length, but to get that then within all the bodywork, because don't forget that the engine cover's coming down here and the pod's coming down here, so you've got to kind of wedge it all in there. And I assume there's also other considerations like getting the bodywork too hot or that heat yeah. moving around because they're at what, 800, 1000 degrees? degrees. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the next part of the car we're going to talk about is the fact that in a Formula 1 car you've got the tub at the front where the driver sits, then you've got the engine, then you've got the gearbox and the diff here, but the interesting thing is that the suspension actually comes directly off the gearbox rather than a chassis that you might have in other, in other cars. Um, so, I mean, first of all, why do they do that? Something, a sports GT car or run a more stock engine, yeah. a, maybe a road car engine. So around from, from, from the back of the, the sports car tub, then it'll have a tubular frame. Yeah, to put the rigidity in the chassis. It'll still run a gearbox with all the suspension on, but because they're running a stock motor, it'll have a, it has to have the rigidity put in to, to support the, the gearbox. Yeah, and a step further, like in a road car, the engine and the gearbox just sit inside the chassis, right? Yeah. yeah. It's none of its strength. three points or four points. Yeah. 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 So the engine is, is fitted on the back of the, the, the tub, normally with four or six studs. So you can see here, Callum, uh, the, the bolt and the, the, the bracket onto the engine here, that goes directly back into the tub and this fix, uh, fixes onto the engine. This one's got four or six. Four. Two at the top, two at the bottom. So you can imagine the forces that are going through all of this are then just going through four studs that run onto the back of the tub, which in itself is, is quite amazing. And an interesting point is that the the suspension is, is all mounted here. So you imagine the force, you know, you've got the wheel coming on here, and when the car sat um, just on the ground, you've obviously got the wheel, the, the force is coming this way, which then goes through the push rod, uh, which then goes through this rocker here, so it's, it's pivoted here, bolted onto the, onto the gearbox here. The force comes up here, goes through the rocker, which then compresses the spring. But all of this is contained on the gearbox, which is absolutely incredible. And is the main reason for that because it's stronger or because it's lighter or like a, a mixture? Pa packaging is a, is a big issue. To keep it all nice and small. Because they're, uh, you know, like now, the, the gearboxes over the years have got smaller and smaller and smaller because they want more air over the rear wing and everything. So yeah. all, all of the, the packaging is one of the biggest factors in, in assembling an F1 car or I think designing an F1 car. That's where when you see the Red Bulls and the kind of Adrian Newey style cars, 
they actually try and package everything. I remember actually they had a problem, didn't they, with the overheating in, in some of the cars. I can't yeah. remember which one it was because they'd so tightly packaged all the internals because they wanted to actually get the aero of the car exactly right. So this is an early 2000s car, but it's still actually quite big and bulky in comparison to the modern 2020 cars that we see nowadays. If you enjoyed this video, check out these other videos which we think you'll love. And don't forget to subscribe to the Driver 61 channel for more really interesting motorsport. Cheers, and I'll see you next time.